Hey everybody, Jim here, and uh, I'm in Shinjuku right now. Came here to take care of some business, and uh, while I'm here, I wanted to maybe go look around for some games at a few places I haven't been to in a while. And uh, the first place we're coming up to is uh, this building right here, which is the Marui building. Uh, there's like, as you can see, it's huge. There are lots and lots of different stores, uh, but we're gonna go up to the fifth floor where they have a Sudagaya, where like amongst other things, they have like tons of retro games, but they also have like figures and uh, other kinds of stuff. It's more of a hobby shop in general, um, but I'm more interested in games, obviously. So we're gonna go up there, the uh, Marui Annex, and uh, check out some retro games in Sudagaya. So here we go. Let's get us some games. All right, everybody, getting started in Sudagaya in this little area first before we start taking a look at the games. Uh, there's an area off to the side where they have old gaming magazines like this MSX fan uh, series of magazines. So I thought we could have a look here first, uh, the MSX fan. Uh, I know a... Uh, a certain viewer of mine, Mr. Electric Adventures, you're going to find that uh, quite appealing. And there's uh, MSX Magazine. So there were multiple MSX publications in uh, Japan, which is, you know, not so surprising. It was an extremely popular uh, series of computers manufactured by all kinds of different um, 
companies, but there's MSX magazines. Uh, all of these are uh, game mags. Um, we can see here. What do we got? Uh, PlayStation. Uh, one of the uh, numerous PlayStation magazines, I'm sure, that were uh, made available in Japan. This one has. This one's called RPG Dragon. Had an Evangelion cover. Uh, something of some Final Fantasy stuff. Neo Geo Freak, which is a uh, pretty cool. Can't argue with a Neo Geo magazine. A PC Engine magazine. Very cool. Uh, so just uh, all kinds of cool stuff. But yeah, multiple PC Engine publications. Uh, that's very, very cool. Um, so all of this is retro gaming uh, related. Old, uh, that one has X68000. There's an X68000 magazine, I guess. This one comes with these, um, I guess these are demo discs. That's uh, pretty cool. Game Wave. They're either demo discs or just normal DVDs. And uh, so I thought that was especially cool. Uh, so I thought it was uh, worth taking a look. So anyone pops in here, that's where they are. Uh, this is all uh, modern gaming stuff, which I wasn't here for today, so we kind of gloss over it. Uh, in case anyone's wondering, I am at home now later in the day as we take a look at some cool box sets. Um, well, not later in the day, it's in the evening. It's actually like a quarter to ten at night as I'm watching this and uh, relaxing with some beer at home. So if you notice some pauses in my uh, speech here and there, uh, that's because I am having a little drinky drinky and watching this footage, and it's quite a lot, so strap yourselves in. As we look at all this, there's Vita and PS4 and just all kinds of stuff. Um, strap yourselves in, because I dug through the retro games a little bit. So we've got to waste because there are so many games in this place. Uh, just a um, an absurd amount of video games. But in this aisle... There is, um, as you can see, more recent. There's um, uh, Switch games, DS, 3DS, Vita, PS4, uh, Sudagaya, a place you can go for more modern stuff. Uh, as we come uh, getting started with the retro, though, as we got some Sega stuff here, including some SG-1000, and there's Game Gear, and uh, all of this stuff, these um, Mark III uh, games. Which, these are all boxed and uh, very cool. I don't have a Mark III or a Master System or anything, but kind of uh, thinking about it. Uh, Alien Syndrome. Uh, I'd like to get something like that. Play some more of the old school uh, retro Sega stuff. Um, as we take a look at Monster World. Classic. Uh, I would like to play a lot of this stuff because I've played uh, a lot of these games on... on on other consoles and in uh, other iterations, but um, you know, someday I would like to get into uh, some of this older stuff. The very first uh, Alesta game by Compile. I love that series. As so we take a look at some boxed stuff up there, Family Basic in '64, and we're looking at boxed Game Boy and Game Boy Color and GBA stuff here. And I've said in the past that I'm not really a handheld collector, so I tend to gloss over this stuff. So if you, uh, if I do have any people who are like diehard uh, handheld collectors in the audience, you'll have to forgive me. Um, as we take a look at some of this uh, GameCube stuff, including uh, Kirby Air Ride, which uh, is and has been for a while now an expensive game. I guess they, uh, I don't know, maybe they didn't sell a lot of those, but... Uh, Kirby Air Ride. Uh, this give you a little perspective. All of this PS2. Look at all these damn games. Um, that's why this video, it could have gone on for hours. Like, if you just look at it, it's a literal library of video games in here. Um, so I wasn't going to dig through, like, everything. Uh, Initial D, 1100 yen. Not bad on that. And, uh, yeah, so I dig a little bit through the uh, PS2, but I really had to move on to other things, but, I mean, just look. But they do have some uh, really good stuff here. I mean, and the prices are, um, I would say they're they're not too bad in here. This uh, Sudagaya, it was okay. 
as we look at these uh, these uh, sequels uh, in the Fatal Frame series. Fatal Frame, um, some of my favorite horror games uh, just ever, like, period. They might be my favorites, actually. I really love the creepy atmosphere, the, uh, the especially Japanese aesthetics that they have. Uh, that game, uh, in English, I think it's called Blood Will Tell. Very good game. We've got some uh, fighting games here, including, like, a Samurai Spirits collection, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, and there's, uh, some, oh, Sengoku Basada 2 for 200 yen. It's a very fun hack and slash game, and you can get it for 200 yen. Uh, we got some fighters here, we got some Dragon Ball Z, some Samurai Spirits, Bloody Roar for Fate Unlimited Codes, great game, and, uh, you know, King of Fighters, and all that stuff. So lots of fighting games. I do like it when um, when uh, these selections of games are broken up by genre, and I don't have to rely on uh, alphabetical and or just like thumbing through everything. I want to go straight to the fighting games sometimes, you know. For some reason, a PC engine game over here mixed in with a PS One, uh, but we do uh, have some very cool PS One stuff on hand. Vib Ribbon and uh, and uh, uh, the PS One um, definitely. A great console to uh, buy games for if you're into imports. Um, uh, this uh, formula was a G formula or what? Uh, I've played other games in that series. They're pretty cool, actually. Cyber formula, that's what it is. Uh, the cyber formula games I have played uh, are pretty good. So I was kind of interested in that, but kind of passed on it. Uh, the Gradius um, uh, collection and uh, Gradius Gaiden and uh, some Parodius. So we've got us. Some shoot 'em ups here. Lots of shoot 'em ups, actually. Uh, Strikers 1945. Love that game. Love that entire series. The Strikers games might be my favorite shoot 'em ups ever, really. Um, so that is pretty cool. So we just got a whole bunch of shooters here. Sokyu Gorentai. Amazing game. G Darius. Great game. Um, game Tengoku 2. I mean, we're just looking at good stuff here, people. So all these uh, PlayStation shoot 'em ups. And there's a Dom Pachi underneath this stuff, and there's there's just so much going on. As we have a uh, what is that gun 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 probe? What does that say? I can't. Oh, it's gone now. In the hunt, um, MDK, love it. Area 51, love it. Um, R type, just a couple of R type games here. I mean, Omega oh, Boost, classic. Uh, so I was just like. Um, as I'm shooting this, I'm just like thumbing through these games. I'm like, oh man, love this. Oh man, love this. Love this. Uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of how I get when when I get to a shoot 'em up section or fighting game section. Is just like I'll just because that's kind of those are my two favorite genres, are fighting games and shoot 'em ups. Uh, so when I get somewhere where they have a bunch of those, I'm just gonna be there for a while thumbing through. Uh, we, but you know, there's plenty of other stuff to enjoy here. We have a bunch of RPGs here. We have Rockman Dash, uh, is that Dash 2? Mega Man Legends. Um, Brave Fencer Musashiden, which is a great game. Uh, something I don't know what the hell it is. Uh, the Final Fantasy Collection. I'm not 100% sure what all is in there, but it's a pretty snazzy looking uh, box it comes in. Uh, Tales of Destiny, that was my first Tales game I ever played, and it was great. Samurai Spirits RPG, yada yada yada. I, I can't <laughs> name every individual game. I, I'm watching this now, and I'm like, oh, wow, I pulled out a whole lot of games. And uh, it's going to get exhausting. Uh, so I'm going to drink some beer while we just watch some of this. Why is Tomb Raider published by Capcom? Okay, whatever. This was an interesting title. Gun Bike. Didn't know what it was. Uh, speed, speed power gun bike. Um, 8,600 yen, though. So I passed on it. But it looked interesting. It looked like you had transforming mech bikes. Like the Garland or something. But we got some fighting games here, people. Tobal 2, classic. KOF 97, great. Uh, the PlayStation version of Cyberbots. Uh, which I have never played the PS1 version. Only the Saturn version. But, Cyberbots is... Fantastic. And we got all these other Capcom fighters here. 
Marvel vs. Capcom, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, all this. I mean, the PlayStation ports are inferior to the Saturn ports, but um, they're still great games. Anyway, uh, just look down that aisle, though. That's how many, how many games were in that PlayStation aisle. As we're looking at some uh, PC games here, like retro big box PC games, some of it looked a little bit naughty. Uh, so I wasn't dwelling on that too long, but here we have Mega Drive. This whole aisle, or this whole side of the aisle, is nothing but Sega. They even got a Genesis game. Where the hell did Genesis Warlock come from? Um, but we do, <laughs> uh, Raiden, uh, Gaiden, or Raiden, oh, Raiden Densetsu, I'm sorry, aka Raiden Trad, I like that, I like the whole Raiden series. Uh, don't mean to be Dick Raiden, but I like Raiden. Um, uh, Samurai Spirits, which is a good port on the Mega Drive, actually. Not all Neo Geo ports to other consoles work out great, but that one did. Genogue is cool, Wings of War, fantastic game, some Zero Wing action. Yes, indeed, all your base are belong to us. Battle Golfer Yui, fantastic game, very quirky. Fire Mustang, also pretty cool. Fantasia sucks, <laughs> and uh, I don't know what the hell that is, and Puyo Puyo, and uh, I mean, yeah, who doesn't like walking into an aisle just filled to the brim with Sega games? Um, Hyper, what, Hyper Dunk? Hyper Dunk, the playoff edition. I don't know what Whatever that is, some kind of arcade. And no, not Fat Man. Anything but Fat Man. Horrible, horrible game. And uh, awesome cover of the original Bare Knuckle. It's in great condition and being sold complete for 5,000 yen. And as we take a look down here, there's some Mega CD. You just a smattering of 32X. I only really like a, a couple of 32X games. Knuckles Chaotix. It's my favorite 32X game, but who has time for that? We're moving on to Sega Saturn, which is a console I love um, collecting games for because there's so much of the stuff I like on it. Uh, uh, was it Guy Feed or whatever? The weird Capcom uh, full motion video game. Um, hey, let's get some bass. Um, I'll catch you a delicious bass. As we have uh, Purikura Daisaksen. Because there's so much of what I like on the Saturn, which is arcade-style games. Uh, shoot 'em ups and fighting games for days. And uh, other great, you know, things as well. There's plenty. There's platformers and beat 'em ups and things. Twinbee, uh, the deluxe pack. It's got a couple of different Twinbee games on it. And they're both uh, fantastic. I do love me some Twinbee. Always have. Well, not always, but... Ever since I first started playing Twin B, I was like, you know what? I like this. Uh, here we have, what is that? Uh, Soko Setokai, which is a 2D fighter, which I believe is made by the same people who made uh, Angel Eyes on the PS1. Uh, this, Tenchio Kurao 2. Fantastic Capcom beat em up. Uh, Warriors of Fate in the US, I believe. It only had an arcade release, though. It was never released on consoles outside of Japan. But it is a fantastic beat-em-up. Right, we got some other good stuff here. Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter with box and RAM carts. Uh, which, uh, less common to come across that one than X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Marvel Super Heroes. That's classic. I love that game uh, to a great degree. And more good stuff. Metal Black. I was thinking about picking this one up, but I passed on it. It was 7,300 units. Yeah, it's a shooter on the Saturn. That uh, looks pretty cool, but um, I did not pull the trigger. But uh, Speaking of shooters, Game Tengoku with the uh, the VHS tape. Whatever else it comes, uh, comes with. And, um, I mean, just... What, what can you say in the face of a wall of Saturn games? X-Men Children of the Atom for 1,700 yen. That's about 15 bucks. It's like 15 bucks for Children of the Atom. That's not bad. Asuka, 120%. Burning Fest, uh, what was it, Limited? Whichever one it was. Uh, I like the Asuka games. Uh, so, yeah. Just when you thought you were done with Saturn, there was more Saturn. As we got some sexy Parodius and uh, Thunder, 
Thunder Force and Sokyo Gorintai and uh, Neo Drift Out or just regular Drift Out, whatever it's called. Uh, Cho Aniki. Just uh, so much stuff. KOF 96 for 2200 yen, which I've been coming across that in hard offs for like a thousand yen. So hold off. Uh, some of the prices in here are great. Some of them are, uh, you know, not the best. But for the most part, I was actually pretty happy with the uh, prices I found in here as we check out some Dreamcast and as I take a little beer break. Dayla Jet Set Radio, the re-release of Jet Set Radio in Japan, with the uh, added uh, stages and music from the uh, U.S. and European releases, as we saw some Ikaruga, Twinkle Star Sprites, Sega Gaga, other great things, including Zero Gunner 2 and Mars Matrix, two of my favorite shooters on the Dreamcast. Dreamcast, another console that has a lot of what I like, shooters and fighting games, and uh, we're looking at a wall of PC Engine here, people. Uh, so we're going to have a look through that. So you get past all the Sega stuff, and then you're hit in the face with this beautiful, beautiful PC Engine section. Just Gradius, Image Fight, Galaga, uh, Genpei Tomadin. Uh, just, um, I mean, really. <laughs> Again, uh, what does one say in the face of a, uh, a wall of PC Engine? Uh, it's getting a little exhausting naming all of the fantastic titles. Sun Sun 2. I just uh, posted a video on that. Salamander. The PC Engine version of Salamander is great. Xevious, one of my favorite old school sh shoot 'em ups. Just uh, cannot go wrong. PC Engine 2. Great game. Final Blaster. Nice shooter by Namco. And Heavy Units. Uh, uh, Barumba is actually really fun too. Also by Namco. PC Engine Batman, I've actually never played it. I watched some video of it, and I'm like, hmm, that's because the NES Batman is actually probably one of my favorite NES games. It's just fantastic. But uh, PC Engine got the short end of the stick on that one. As we look at some Valus games, uh, Valus 2 and 3. I like the Valus series. Uh, for whatever reason, because they are admittedly like not the best games in the world, but uh, they, got a, they got a charm to them. I took a liking to them. But we got all these super CD... And CD-ROM and Hue card games. Uh, so there's just a ton of PC Engine to dig through. So if you're in Sudogai and you're a PC Engine fan, have at it. And we got even some Neo Geo stuff here, including the games for the Neo Geo CD. Uh, these are all pretty nice games. And the prices aren't it's terrible on these, as I'm knocking things off the shelf. I love it when you forget that you knock something off the shelf and you keep it in the video. Um... Yeah, pretty good stuff here. We got, you know, Samurai Spirits, King of the Monsters, uh, Cross Swords. All of your uh, kind of usual suspects for the Neo Geo CD. And then uh, AES games as well. Uh, we got World Heroes and Samurai Spirits and stuff. I mean, again, a lot of your usual suspects. Um, when we get to the case, then you're going to see uh, some legit Neo Geo prices. Uh, on, on the other side of the aisle... Um, we have some, uh, boxed N64, except for this. Somebody decided they wanted to put Super Metroid in there, uh, with the N64 games. Really great condition one, too. But we got the Smash Brothers, and we got the Marios, and all of that stuff. I'm not, a, you know, collecting for N64 right now, and not really collecting loose carts, either. So I kind of breeze through this, but we can see, like, Final Fight 2 for 900 yen. You know, even if it is, like, a loose cart, that's actually not bad, for a loose cart of Final Fight 2. And there's your Mario RPGs and your, your Mario Karts, your Street Fighters, Donkey Kongs, Gradius 3. So uh, loose carts, they have a ton. And it's all the stuff you would want for your Super Famicom. As we look at some MSX games, which I do not come across in many stores. Uh, I've never even played an MSX in my life. Uh, but it does look pretty cool. 
Uh, I would like to give the MSX a try. See this? Rambo. My Looks like my kind of game. <laughs> I should get an MSX and just play me some Rambo. Um, that would be uh, pretty nice. And uh, for whatever reason, a game called Shalom by uh, Konami. No idea what the hell that is. I just thought that was, that was funny. They, have, they made a game called Shalom. And an MSX version of Dragon Quest II. That's pretty cool. So I'd like to like to give the MSX a try someday. Play some of those cool games on it. There's a modest selection of Xbox there as well. So if you collected some Xbox games, have at it. Uh, and then there's you know baskets here, kind of junky things. And then there's the case over there with all the expensive stuff. We'll get around to that. Um, but on this side of the aisle, though. This is where we got uh, some uh, Super Famicom stuff. Uh, Rockman X2 and uh, Rockman 7. Rockman 7 is 2,600 yen. That's not uh, terrible, I guess. 700 yen for Mario RPG. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but we're looking at all this boxed Super Famicom. We got some Sailor Moon games. How how lovely. Um, they got uh, I saw they had Violinist of Hameln. One of my favorite Super Famicom games. Uh, Yoshi's Island. What are they doing on that? Uh, Yoshi's Island. 1,500 yen. And it's in great shape. Really, really good. Uh, you can uh, buy here with confidence. I can say that. Because uh, I've bought a number of games from Sudagaya. And uh, they've all uh, worked out great for me. Um, the Super Famicom version of Raiden Densetsu. Uh, I do prefer the Mega Drive version of that game. Most shooters, almost any shooter, is going to be better on the the Mega Drive. There are only certain uh, Super Famicom shooters, uh, not including Cho Haniki, um, but there are only um, certain Super Famicom shooters that I would put in like the same league as some Mega Drive shooters, either because of how they play or uh, because of just how much I like them. Um, like uh, maybe like. Um, uh, Super Lest, a.k.a. Space Megaforce. I'd put that in there. Uh, here we have Castlevania 4. I love the cover art of the Japanese Castlevania 4. And uh, Dracula X, still holding a, a value there. 13,800 yen uh, for a not great game, in my opinion. Uh, R-Type 3. I, uh, I love this game. It, it frustrates the hell out of me. It's so very difficult. But I do really, really like R-Type 3. The Third Lightning. Uh, that is a great game. And that's that's one of those uh, Super Famicom shooters that I hold in high regard. This one as well. Area 88. A.K.A. UN Squadron. Very fun game. Trying to get that blue thing out of the way. Uh, also, if you see that blue thing, the little blue tag on the front of a uh, game when you pick it up, that means that the actual game is not in the box or the case. Uh, it will be given to you. Uh, when you go to check out. So a lot of the games on these shelves, um, the actual disc or cartridge is actually uh, behind the counter that you have to go to, and they give you your game. Kind of like, uh, I guess they used to do like in KB Toys, right? Or uh, was it Toys R Us, where you take like the little thing off the rack and bring it to the, the person. And uh, this is called Dragon Ninja, and this is Bad Dudes. Uh, so for anybody that uh, might be interested, the Japanese title of Bad Dudes is Dragon Ninja. And here is Dragon Ball, Shinran no Nazo, which was turned into Dragon Power on the NES, I do believe. And the uh, the second Dragon Ball game, I think, it's either Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball 3, but uh, this is when it went to uh, RPGs. Um, but yeah. And both of those games in, in really fantastic shape, especially for being as old as they are. And they have a copy of Knight Rider, which uh, I used to have a loose copy of Knight Rider, actually. It's kind of a... I don't know, it's almost like a... Um, it's not like Spy Hunter. I mean, you drive, you chase down cars, you shoot them, things like that. But we've got all these boxed uh, Famicom games here. Most of it in decent shape. Uh, we have DuckTales for 5800 which I feel good that I bought mine for 4000 from uh, a book off. Uh, Rockman 5, which is actually my favorite of the 8-bit Rockman games, actually. I know most people will say 
uh, two or three. And uh, I love those two. I love all the Rockman games. But five is actually my personal favorite. Usually when I reach for one off the shelf, that's the one I... I know that game like the back of my hand. I can beat it in a pretty short order. And we got a bunch of loose Famicom carts as well. Uh, with plenty of cool stuff uh, on the racks. Your Marios and your, your Double Dragons. And uh, cool things like that. Uh, some Kunio Kun games. Uh, Common Ninja no Hanamaru. Uh, Chippendale. And uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so just like lots, lots, and lots of loose carts to rummage through if you're so inclined. The Ninja Ryu Kinden games. Lots of quality stuff. And again, you can always pretty much buy with confidence. They're going to be in as good a shape as a Famicom cart can be. And now we come to the case, and you can look at some of these uh, prices uh, while I take a drink. Because these prices make me want to drink. So how is this case making you feel? Can you express it to me? Uh, I mean, there's amazing, amazing games in here. It's just, uh... It's rarefied air. We're looking at the Pocky and Rockies and the... The undercover cops and, uh... The sapphires. Oh my goodness, the sapphires of the world. Um, I mean, this is all... Like, if I had just unlimited funds, I would empty this case out. Uh, these All these games would be going home with me. Um, unfortunately, though, I'm like uh, most other people. I have to pick my shots when it comes to game collecting. Uh, all these boxed Super Famicom games. There's Macross in there. And uh, for whatever reason, Gogo -Go Akman is in there. That's not an uncommon game at all. That really shouldn't be priced that much. Uh, Wolverine, Super Ninja Kun. Um... Another copy of R-Type 3 for some reason. GS Mikami. A few more Mega Drive and Super Famicom games, including Wild Guns. Good old Wild Guns. And these Famicom games as well. Um, I can see, like, uh, Dorobi and Gimmick. Gun Deck is in there. Gun Deck has become fairly expensive these days. Bucky O'Hare. I'm lucky enough to have loose copies of Gun Deck and Bucky O'Hare at this point. Love both of those games. And we got some more stuff in the case here, moving past the games and into, like, Game Boys and consoles and other things. And, uh, nice stuff. Got our Neo Geo Mini. We got our Sega Mark Threes And a Duo RX, PC Engine Duo RX for, like, $700. Good lord. Um... So some expensive uh, stuff in these cases. So usually I just look at these cases and weep. This is the window shopping portion. I did buy a couple of games today. But they were not out of any of these cases. But we got us some PC Engines and uh, Virtual Boy boxed. In case you want a Virtual Boy Mega Drive and stuff. Anyway, we're coming down to the end of this. And I've been rambling on for like a half an hour now. So if anyone's still here, thank you. You have the patience of a saint. And Biohazard 5th Anniversary Special Package. I can only imagine what the hell is in there. It's got to be awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, we've uh, pretty much talked enough. So let's, uh, let's get the hell out of here. What do you say? Okay, so that's it for... Sudagaya today. Uh, as you could see, they had a lot, a lot of games. And, and again, it wasn't just games. Uh, they had like figures and other kinds of collectibles and merch and things like that. Uh, but I didn't want the video to be like three hours long because I could spend all day in Sudagaya. Uh, it's almost like an absurd amount of games that they have in there. And the prices, for the most part, weren't too bad. Some of the usual suspects are still like really expensive. Um, but I did uh, walk out with a few games 
a few uh, new Sega Saturn games, which I'm happy to uh, go home and try out. Uh, but anyway, uh, Sudagaya in the Marui building in Shinjuku. It's awesome. Ton of games. If you're going to be in Tokyo and you want to look for some uh, retro games or modern games as well, uh, definitely go check out Sudagaya. Uh, it's awesome. That's uh, my final word on the matter. It's awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.